What's up, people? Somebody asked me to do this video, which just popped up in my feed also. I tried Marcus Aurelius Nighttime Routine for 28 days. What is this? I wonder. Um, I'm not sure. I didn't know Marcus Aurelius had a nighttime routine. I feel like I would have heard of this sooner. Um, but anyway, we're going to watch this now. If you guys have any other recommendations for videos or YouTubers you want me to take a look at, let me know. Leave me a comment. Marcus Aurelius is the world's most famous Stoic philosopher. And the philosophy of Stoicism promises some pretty incredible things. First of all, it promises that if you follow it, you're going to be able to make the correct decisions every single time. And also, you're going to live a tranquil life, is a word they use a lot, and a life that's just filled of balance, where everything just fits in its right place. Now, these things are quite extreme, and everyone wants to live a life like that. So to put it to the test, I decided to do Marcus Aurelius' evening routine every single day for 28 days and see what happened. It's important to note that everything I'm doing here, the six concepts I'm going to talk about, is taken from Marcus Aurelius' meditations, which is the private journal that he used to have. And if you're looking for the best translation of that, you can find it by clicking the link in the description. Also, if you enjoy this video at any point in time, then make sure you just give it a like by clicking the like rating, it really helps out the YouTube algorithm. And finally, we're going to be talking about the six things that I did every single evening for the past 28 days. And finally, we're going to talk about the benefits after we talk about the six things and how they actually changed my life. So the first thing I did every single evening was what the Stoics called contemplation of the sage. And in Marcus Aurelius' meditations, he would often ask himself the question, what would Zeno do? And it doesn't matter who you're looking up to for Marcus Aurelius, Zeno was the person he looked up to, but for you, it can be anyone. And the point of doing this is that the person that you're looking up to has some character traits that you want to have, which means that when it comes down to making a decision as your day goes by, you can simply ask yourself the question, what would the person I'm looking up to do in this decision? And you're disassociating yourself from the decision. You're not letting your emotions dictate, but instead you're deciding what's best for you and acting upon that relentlessly. Now, I've actually taken this one step further, and I think an even better exercise is to simply compare yourself to your ideal character traits. Because I think instead of comparing yourself to someone else or where someone else is today, you should be comparing yourself to where you were yesterday. So my life philosophy is very, very simple, and I'll quickly explain it to you right here. First of all, you define exactly what you want in life. Then you define who you need to become in order to achieve that dream life easily. Then you define where you are now, the kind of person you are now, and then simply... Alright, I, I, I like Marcus Aurelius' version easier. It's like, we gotta fucking make a diagram now to like, do this? No, like, what would Zeno do? Much easier. Just how much? I don't know. Whatever. Good for him. He's thinking of something. He's trying. Whatever. Uh, maybe other people like it. Uh, also, what is this? Is this some sort of Google like app or something like that? What is this app? Anybody? If anybody knows, um, what would Zeno do? I like that. I I like that. I really do. Um, there's a uh, back when RSD was less of a popular company there was a people would write field reports on the rsd real social dynamics forum which is a fairly active forum um this is before like reddit was really popular and all these other forums for pick up you know social media and stuff like that for youtube was really popular everyone kind of went there and there was a people would always ask what would what would td do what would tyler durden do like the top guy i think he's like the ceo but he's like the lead instructor. He's like the face name of the brand, like the lifeblood of the brand. And people would always say, like, you know, they'd write in the field report, like, yeah, I tried this, didn't work, tried this, didn't work. I was ready to quit. But then I thought to myself, you know, it's like, what would Jesus do? WWJD, except it was WWTDD. What would Tyler Durden do? That was his name, Tyler Durden, is what he went by. Um, so interesting. I and, and then, of course, there's the what would Jesus do? Contemplation of the sage. I kind of like that. I, I I don't know where. Uh, like, I guess I, I don't know. I I feel like I've listened to meditation. I used to listen to Marcus Aurelius's books, audiobooks, when I would play Dota. I play Dota for like fifteen hours a day sometimes, and I would listen to audiobooks. I listened to Nassim Taleb's books like I don't know, twenty times each. Um, I listened to Marcus Aurelius's books. I listened to a ton of like audiobooks. I don't remember this. Maybe I was too engrossed in Dota. Um, okay, cool. I like it. I'm gonna do it. What else you got? Every single day, you try to get from where you are now closer towards the kind of person you want to be. So I've written out a long list of character traits of the kind of person I want to be. And for my contemplation of the sage, whenever a decision would come up, or in the evening, I would simply dream about this kind of person, and that helped me make the correct decisions throughout my day. The second thing is called a view from above. Put very simply, it's where you view yourself from a third person point of view, similar to as if you're playing a video game. Now, there's a couple ways that you can do this. First of all, you zoom out and you see yourself from third person, and you keep zooming out until you see I don't know the streets around you. You keep zooming out until you see the city around you, and you keep zooming out, keep zooming out, keep zooming out until you can see the whole world. And the point of doing this is meant to put everything in perspective. When you can look around and you can notice the people that are having the first kisses, or notice the people that are starving in a different country, everything, all of your problems that you constantly think about are put in perspective because when you recognize that everyone else has problems just as big as you then your perspective on things completely change you're not going to want to complain you're wanting to make the most out of your life and so on and so on but there's also a second way of doing it and that is similar to the first exercise we talked about and that is as you're going on or out about your day view yourself as if you're playing a video game and that you are simply a character what this does is, again, you're disassociating yourself from your emotions. And this sounds bad, but you can actually see a lot of benefits from it. Because when there's times that you want to procrastinate, there's times you want to be lazy, by simply viewing yourself as if you were a character, it gives you so much more control over the actions that you take. Instead of being at the whims of the environment around you or the emotions that you're feeling, instead take control of yourself by viewing yourself from a third person and make the correct decisions that way. I do this again and again and again throughout my life, and especially in the past 28 days, and I've noticed a huge benefit, which again we'll talk about at the end of this video. The third thing is simply physical exercise.
interesting. This is a, this is something they teach in NLP, or I was exposed to it when I studied NLP, which is basically like, um, it's a, what's it called? Time dilation? No, not time dilation. Um, timeline therapy. Tad James, timeline therapy. You guys are welcome to Google that if you want. Basically, the idea is that you zoom out, essentially. You, you, you imagine, for, for example, right now I'm, I'm sitting in this cafe. I'm making a video, right? Let's say that I was faced with some sort of anxiety-inducing decision, of something I wanted to do, something I had to do. Basically, what I would do is I would imagine, let's say, you know, a drone, for example, um, with a camera kind of looking down on the cafe, right? And it just kind of puts things in perspective. Okay, if you have a drone looking down on the cafe, it's going to see the street, it's going to see all these other buildings, it's going to see all these people going about their day, and if I'm sitting here behind my eyes thinking about my life and this decision and it's giving me so much anxiety and it seems so important to me, if I zoom out and I see that the vastness of even just this like block that I'm on right now is so much more complex than like this one decision, it, it lessens the intensity of, of this decision, makes it easier to make the right choice by disassociating. That's kind of what it is. You know that's that's the first step the second step let's say you're still anxious about it you zoom out even further to a 10 block radius right then i mean a 10 block radius and you're just like this little speck that's nothing uh, another concept that i was exposed to not too long ago that helps kind of put things in perspective for me is called the ice ball theory right i read this in a book about i want to say about negotiation I what this book was about some real estate book that i read this was recommended by somebody else who read a really good book yeah, I think it's intelligent. Anyway, this person basically says like 50 million years from now, the sun is going to burn out, or whatever the number is, I don't know, a billion years. The sun is going to burn out, the earth is going to turn into a giant ice ball, and your problem is going to be meaningless anyway. You know, that was that was one example that he gave. The previous one, a little bit more morbid, but you're going to be dead in fucking 50, 60 years anyway, so what the fuck do you care like, about your little decision to whatever it is you're fucking agonizing about. Like, it doesn't even really matter, honestly. Um, okay, good. I guess the third one, exercise? I, I don't know. Okay, I don't know. you got to throw that in there, right? Exercise. Drink lots of water. Marcus Aurelius noticed the importance of physical exercise, not just because you look better. In fact, he even looked down upon that because he was saying that if you exercise to look better, that's just you being vain. But also because the more you work on your body, the better you'll be able to work on your mind. The body and mind are very closely linked. Marcus Aurelius noticed that. So for this uh, this experiment, I was working out every single day closer towards the evening. And number four is meditation. And this is going to be an interesting point and probably not one that you've ever heard of before. I'm not just going to be talking about the Buddhist meditation, but there's actually another benefit of meditation that I started to notice as I was doing this 28-day exercise. And when you start meditating, there'll be times where you'll feel an itch. And at the start, you go and you itch it straight away. But with time and hours of meditation, you recognize that that itch, you don't have to itch it. And you can control your body. And although it might be tempting to go and scratch that itch, the more you meditate, the more you learn that it's actually beneficial to not scratch that itch. And with time, the itch just disappears in and of itself. Why is this important? Because with time and meditation, you can learn to control your body to not scratch that itch. But that is exactly the same thing that you can do when you're in out in the real world. For example, you're in a meeting and everyone around you is just getting snappy. And someone says a comment to you and it makes you angry. That itch you feel to snap back is very similar to the physical itch you feel when you're meditating. But just like meditation can practice your ability to not scratch that itch, in the real world, practicing meditation can stop you from acting on that itch to shout out and have an argument with the other person. The example gets, gets applied to all of these different things, but I noticed that meditating, and this is something that Marcus Aurelius noted, meditating lets you control your actions to a far greater degree than anything else that I've ever found. And controlling your actions is just so important. Activity. I don't know, I think it's a bit of a stretch. Um, so there, there seems to be, nobody seems to really be able to agree on what meditation is. Like, what is it even? You just sit there quietly and like stare at the wall. The, the, the way that I've heard meditation explained that seems the most appealing to me is where you sit and you imagine your ideal future, right? You imagine these things that you want in your life, that you've achieved, that you've attained. You just imagine your ideal life and in the act of imagining it and focusing on it will kind of saturate your brain with the belief that it's possible. And that, you know, as I'm fond of saying, if you, you, you don't have a chance unless you believe that it's possible. Right? Like, why, for example, am I not now, I don't know, a millionaire? I don't really believe that I can be a millionaire. I mean, I believe that I can somehow. I don't really know how because I haven't really thought about it. And, and meditation is kind of, I guess, a blocked out time period where you will focus on it regularly. So, or focus on it specifically, I should say. Um, exercise, I, I don't know, obviously, exercise. Don't exercise to be vain. 
I don't know, like, how can you not, really? How can, how can you not take pride in the fruits of your labor, which, you know, having a nice body has many benefits in the real world. How can you not... I don't know, this stoicism stuff, like, it sounds good, but I feel like a lot of... This is like, this is like the old school Silicon Valley circle jerk, where they talk about, like, gratitude. It's like, they don't really mention why gratitude is important. They just say, oh, you have to be grateful. I made all this money, but it doesn't matter. Just have to be grateful. It's like, I don't know, wasn't Marcus Aurelius... Wasn't he, like, the emperor or something? He was... Emperor Marcus Aurelius? He, he was, wasn't he? Or he was a general or some shit? I don't know, I guess... I guess you don't really have to be modest for a general or an emperor. I don't know. Whatever. Um, okay, what's number five? Number five that I did for the past 28 days is simply reviewing the day. Now, this is something I've actually been doing for a lot longer than 28 days, but I've been emphasizing it and making sure that I spent a lot of time doing it because it's something that Marcus Aurelius mentioned and he said it was very, very important. Now, why would you review a day? Or before why, what do you mean when you say review the day? It's simply sitting in the evening and thinking back on the day. What happened? What do you remember? What went well? What didn't go well? It's just simply thinking about the day as it went by as chronologically as you can. Why would you do this? Well, there's three benefits. First of all, by remembering your day, you're able to congratulate yourself for the things that you did well. And why do you want to congratulate yourself? Well, because when you congratulate yourself, your body's more likely to do that thing again. Just like when you train a dog, he does something good, you give it a treat, it's more likely to do it again. If you sit down and you take the time to congratulate yourself for the things that you did well, you're more likely to do it again. Second benefit is you're able to identify the problems that you did, where you went wrong. And if you pinpoint and select and highlight the things that you did wrong, you know exactly what you need to fix the next day. Whereas if you don't review a day, you end up forgetting about it. Your brain makes rationalizations for why that thing happened and you just ignore it. The third benefit is you're able to see how far forward from your goals you are getting. Are you on track to reach your goals? Are you not on track? Do you need to do something different? Reviewing a day will let you do that as well. And reviewing my day for the past 28 days, and when I mean reviewing, I mean taking a solid five minute period to sit back and think, right, what happened, what happened, what happened? That has been a great benefit to me, and I'm able to improve my life again and again and again every single day, make those 1% improvements that we all know matter so much. And finally, journaling. Jo journaling. Okay, so I, I was listening to what he said about um, reviewing the day. It reminded me, and he's right, I really hope I haven't fucking been muting myself on and off here. Please don't be muted, please. All right, cool. Um, so basically, when I was younger, I don't know, I always keep a journal, right? When I was like eight years old, um, I was in a, 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 I don't know, my mom like nagged to put me in like a gifted program for kids when I was like eight. She's like, I want my son to be in the gifted program. I don't know, were there tests? I don't really remember. I think my mom just like called and complained, put me in the gifted program. Um, anyway, I didn't like it. I hated it. I felt super weird and awkward. Just was a weird, awkward kid. And I was like forced to like <laughs> interact with these kids who were all like way smarter than me. But anyway... The like teacher of the gate program, or it was called Gates, I remember, gifted something, something, something. The teacher of the gate program, God, how do I remember that? Um, she gave me a journal at the end of the year, a blank journal. And she was like, she wrote like one sentence in there, like, write your thoughts in here, or something like that. Didn't touch it for years. At some point, I think I was like 11 or 12 or something, I started writing in the journal. I started writing every day, what happened. I don't know what was wrong with, or why I decided to do it. I don't know if there's anything wrong with me. But basically what I would do is I would sit and just write. I didn't even write that much once in a while. Like sit and write stuff that happened to me that day. And I thought it was so profound when I would sit and write. It's like, you know, I talked to a girl today and she said this and I said that and that means this. I was like doing like social, you know, commentary or like analyzing the social dynamics of like our little like junior high interactions or something. Anyway, I kept up this uh, hobby of writing, or habit, hobby, habit, and this progressed to, by the time I was 19, uh, 20, I was journaling, and these journal entries, when, when MySpace came around, MySpace had a, a blog option, or a feature, and I would sit and I would write, I would basically come home at the end of the day, and I would write out these massive stories about what had happened to me that day, I'm talking thousands of words. I went here, I did this, this happened, they said this, I'd like map out these conversations of this like this person's little micro expression and they said it was very well written. I still have it to this day. Interestingly enough, why am I even bringing this up? Because I got a lot of value out of this exercise of journaling every single day. For example, one of the things that I got out of this was learning how to tell a story about anything and making it sound interesting. And the, the way, I don't know, whatever, I'll make another video about that, but, but the devil is in the details. Anyway, that's that. Um, number two, I, it, was, it was during this time where I was writing every day that I made the decision to move to Israel and join the army. And I don't think that I would have made that decision had I not written about my experiences before leading up to and during that decision. 
that I made. And I, when I moved to Israel and ended up joining the army, I continued to write in my journal. It eventually stopped about, I don't know, a few months after I joined, just because can't really, maybe a year after I joined, I think I, I think I kept it up. Like occasionally I'd come home on the weekends and I would, you know, write, but like, it's, it's hard when you don't write every day. Like just like write about what happened the past three weeks. It's just like overwhelming. But I, I worked out a lot of shit in my mind on paper by telling these stories because it allowed me, similar to the rest of these suggestions, what they, what they seem to kind of hint at, they allow you to disassociate yourself from the intensity of the first person experience of what you're doing and to make the decision, you know, make a, make a less emotionally attached decision to what you're doing and more of a like video game character decision or as if you were deciding for another person which is a little bit easier because you're not like you don't imagine that it's you really it's this other thing it's your proxy kind of um and when he said reviewing the day i, I guess i kind of combined that with journaling i kind of feel like i should do it again but you know me i'm a voyeur 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 i'm a voyeur i, I would want people to read it i put that shit online and it's like i'm, I'm such a snob with everything like i would want to like wake up and every little detail about like what I was doing like I sat here I did this I said this they looked at me they thought I was like and plus my days are so similar now you know back back when I was doing this I was in university and my days had more variety I feel just because I was living a more varied life now I'm in like a routine I do the same shit over and over is that an excuse probably not I, it's probably a valuable exercise anyway I, I should do it if for no other reason than making a website with a lot of content, have some value in it, I'm sure. I should make my Yala Poppy website. Put all my videos on that website. Just fucking Google juice that shit up. Journaling will change your life. If you can simply get the habit of journaling, your life will be absolutely changed. Now, the last video I made was about journaling, and that video is going to show you, first of all, how to journal, but then second of all, how to actually keep the habit of journaling. If you want to watch that, then it's up in one of these, these corners. Go ahead and click that link, and it's, it's an incredible video. Now, finally, let's get on to how these six exercises has impacted my life. First of all, I feel happier. There is no other way to describe it than happiness or fulfillment. Basically, from what I've been doing, I just feel happier in general. And I think this is from two different reasons. First of all, these six things that I've been doing have made me a more effective person. The journaling and the reviewing my day helps me solve the problems that I'm having in my life. I get more done. And as you know, growing, getting more done is deep rooted within us to give us fulfillment. Also, the meditation has been scientifically proven to increase happiness. So that's the first benefit. Second benefit, less stress. Things just feel like they're taken care of. I don't have so many nagging worries of, oh, I need to do this thing. Oh, I should have done that thing better. No, it's disappeared. Instead, I'm content with my time. I'm content with what I did for the day. Because also, no no time gets wasted. Well, very little gets time wasted. I feel like a machine getting stuff done at a rate I have never achieved before. These 28 days has completely pivoted my life because I've been so much more disciplined with myself, so much more focused on the things I need to do. I outlined six things I need to do on a day-to-day -day basis and it's impacted me and it's impacted my productivity a ridiculous amount. Third of all, I have more energy. I feel like my momentum is taking me to crazy places. I feel like my future is going to be brighter than it's ever been before. I've moved so much. I've got so much done. I've taken so much action and so much has happened. The results I've been getting have been insane and it's giving me this momentum that's just carrying me forward like a huge tidal wave. Like, I think that's the only way I can describe it. I feel like I almost, I've built the habit so much that there's this tidal wave that's just pushing me towards where I want to be and it's so exciting and that is excitement that excitement is what's giving me all of this energy it's like a reoccurring cycle when you start to make improvements in your life more other beneficial things happen to you which encourage you to make more improvements which means more beneficial things happen to you and so on and so on and so on until you get this crazy exponential curve and I feel like I'm right at the beginning of that curve and finally I don't know if you've been able to tell but my confidence feels through the roof when things get done I feel confident it's simple if you lack confidence there's a couple of options number one you can try trick your brain into thinking you're good at doing things all right before it gets into the like confidence tip although it does seem like he's almost done um whatever anyway so interesting kind of makes me want to try it not gonna lie it reminds me I, I did a video earlier today about uh one of the old rsd instructors named alex um pickup instructor seems like he's i don't know seems like he's like having an existential crisis honestly or at least it did i don't know it seems like he's figuring it out now but i, I think leading up to this video the, the video that he made was like it said it, the title was "Getting Girls Is Not Going to Make You Happy," right? Is the is the is the the idea of that video, and, and by extension, making a lot of money is not going to make you happy. Getting your ideal body is not going to make you happy. Like all the shit that you think is going to make you happy is not actually going to make you happy. What is going to make you happy is this is his conclusion is the process of being busy, um, which we could reduce that to, to taking action. I think what what this I want to say kid, but what this guy adds is that it's taking the correct actions. In particular, these six things that he's laid out, which is, I guess, imagining what your role model would do, what would Zeno do, 
meditating, which I, I don't know. I'm, I'm interpreting that to mean he seems to say that it's like this like discipline for discipline's sake. Like how long can you sit still without scratching yourself? I guess is, is what he's saying. I, I don't really know. That, that wasn't clearly defined. I, I prefer if I were to do this, which I probably will start doing. I'm going to start doing it. What I will start doing is the imagine your ideal life type of meditating. Um, I've heard this suggested before, but I've heard it from people to do it in the morning, and I've, it's like, oh my god, it's changed my life, it's so amazing, blah, blah, blah. Like, I should do that more. I, I kind of do that before I go to bed, but like, I'm, I fall asleep really fast, so um, how, how much time am I really spent doing that as opposed to just like putting my earplugs in and going to sleep? Um, what were the other things? Reviewing the day, journaling, exercise, fine, like, of course, exercise. Reviewing the day, journaling. What was the other one? I don't know, whatever. Basically, just being, I guess, I, I want to say mindful. It's so fucking Silicon Valley circle jerk cliche trash. Like, really, what it is, is just kind of like disassociating yourself. Exercises and disassociation, I guess, is, is the best way to put it, right? Number one, what would Zeno do? What would this other person who's not me, if they were to, it, it forces you to like look at yourself from the outside as opposed to the first person view from behind your eyes is what I said. That's an exercise in dis disassociation. The second one, what was it? It was meditation, arguably another form of disassociation because you're, the act of imagining is you're imagining, I, I don't know, maybe that's a stretch, but you could say it, imagining yourself in the third person, right? Imagining all these wonderful things happening to you. I don't know, is that really dissociation? I don't know, it's a stretch. Anyway, exercise are also not really disassociation, more of a distraction, I feel, other than anything else. Like, when you were panting for breath, right, I remember when I was in the army, like, they would they would push us to the point of exhaustion, and you get to a point where you, you cannot perform, you, you just cannot do something, you, your body has to rest, you have to, you feel like you're going to die from the exertion. Not like you're going to die, but you just, you, you're, you think to yourself, fuck, I have to stop now. And you, you don't think about anything else when that happens, what do you think, you're not thinking but whatever problem you have, unless it's like you broke your arm or whatever, something like that. But generally, you don't you don't think about that. You're just focused on the immediate, and it, it tends to turn the volume down on everything else when you're experiencing um, the uh, pain of physical exercise. Let's call it pain, right, or discomfort. Let's call it. And then the reviewing the day slash journaling. Those are also arguably exercises in disassociation. Because you're you're forced to recall things in a way, I guess it's not really disassociate. It's, it's kind of a cross between disassociation, distraction, and closer examination when you're removed from the situation. So I guess what it really is is these exercises are designed to make you less emotional about your decisions, um, which I think I know I definitely could use some help with that. I'm. Whatever, you see me like sit here with my headset on and like analyze these people. I probably sound pretty logical. I've got like a good head on my shoulders. I'm just as emotional as anybody else. In fact, I remember when I was a little kid, m my dad said something to me. I was like 13, 14. He was like, you're so emotional. Like, he like said it like with disgust. My dad's a super nice guy. I wouldn't hurt a fly. But like, he said it. We we're like arguing about something in the car as, you know, 14 year olds will do with their parents. And... He said it with disgust. I was like throwing a tantrum. He's like, God, like, if you don't do exactly what you want to do in any situation, you go to pieces. You're so emotional. And I was like, I don't know. I, I, maybe that gave me pause and I thought about it. I was like, hmm, am I being unreasonable? I don't know. That's how I remember it. Whatever. Anyway, let's, let's hear uh, the, the conclusion here. Second of all, you can just get stuff done. And when you get stuff done, you prove to your brain, you give it physical evidence, you can reach your goals. And when you reach your goals, you get more confidence, which makes you set bigger goals. And that confidence helps you to reach those goals. And again, it's the exponential curve, and I feel like I'm right at the beginning. If you want to join me on this crazy journey and you want to improve your life day by day by day, then go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure you give it a like. It helps with the YouTube algorithm, and I really, really appreciate it. Finally, let me know down in the comment section. Whatever. Anyway, this is a good video. I, I like... I, what, why do I like this person? I, I don't know. Sometimes you just like people. It's like, why do I like this guy? Andrew Kirby? Like, who is this guy? The YouTube algorithm. We meet again. Alright. Cool video, man. I don't know. Uh, cool video, man. Really enjoyed it. What am I going to say on here? Uh, you've convinced me to start 
meditating and journaling. Again, journaling. Yeah. Uh, keep it up. I see big things in your future. I really do. What is this kid? Like fucking 18, 19? Amazing. Um, interesting. Okay. I, I kind of want to do his journaling video. Uh, okay, cool. Anyway, if you guys have any other recommendations for videos or YouTubers you want me to take a look at, let me know. Leave me a comment. Also, question. Do you guys do any of this shit? Have you ever read any of Marcus Aurelius' books? What do you think of them? If so, did they depress you as well, or was that just me? Um, and what about these habits? Will, will you should we should we do a seven day journaling thing together and see what that does? I don't know. I, I feel like that'd be fun. Anyway, peace.